Welcome, Drink with James, episode 131. Well, first of all, thank you guys for voting on my facial hair. I, I know we are tackling the important issues here on Drink with James, and overwhelmingly, y'all say uh, that I should grow the beard, so I will grow the beard, um, because I am nothing if not your humble servant. Um, and I build my life around pleasing you all. So I will grow a beard uh, if that is your wish. It is my command. Um, so thank you for that. Also, uh, thank you to everyone for sharing. Um, I saw a bunch of posts this week of people um, saying that you've learned a lot from Drink With James, you watch it every week, and you know, putting a swipe up, um, we saw like, more views in the first day than we usually do. Like how many, twice you know, like as many? Twice as much as we've ever gotten. Yeah, like twice as much as we've ever gotten in the first day, even with a big guest. Um, I really appreciate that. And if you're sitting there watching saying, oh, I've never shared Drink With James with my audience, you know, I say, I don't ask for much. Um, let's make me more famous. Uh, so, you know, get your, get your phones out. Take a screenshot, take a video, put a little story together, put a swipe up, say you love me, say you've learned a lot from me, it wouldn't kill you. I see all the stuff you guys are posting, I'm sure you can squeeze a post in about me. Um, I would appreciate it. But it goes to something Tim and I were talking about, which is how much reposting is enough. Um, it's, it's difficult, I think, especially as you're an influencer that gets bigger and bigger, you're getting tagged all the time in stories and it's so easy to just hit that, that add to your story button. Um, and I try to, look, when, when, uh, you know, when people, I don't usually post about Drink With James, I use those reposts um, every Monday. I, I try and throw you know, two to five up tops. Five is kind of on the high end. Um, but I try and throw a couple of the posts up and, and say thanks and all that. And, and that is totally fine, but I, I, we, you know, I have seen influencers who are just reposting seemingly every single post that someone does. And it's just, again, I, you know, I'm not going to dwell on this too much because we talked a bit about long stories last week in the holiday end of the year rant. But if, if you know, if the dots on the top of your story are barely visible, you probably have posted too much for that day. Um, especially if it's 10 posts of people tagging you. Um, again, there are specific scenarios where like, I totally understand it. You have something, a new announcement, you have something exciting has happened in your life. I would encourage you to screenshot those, save them, compile them, put five or 10 on one page. Um, you know, I've seen people do a great job of this. I just saw Tezza do it the other day. She had one post on her story that had like eight or nine stories from people put into one screen saying, thank you guys so much. Like there are ways to do it that are less lazy and aren't going to make your audience go click, 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 scroll. Like I think that like if, if I'm going through someone's feed and I see two or three reposts in a row, I just flip over to the next one. Um, so again, be more intentional, be more thoughtful, ask yourself, is this interesting to me or is this interesting to my audience? I understand, especially if you're a bigger influencer, wanting to repost, it's a bit of a thrill for your audience to be reposted onto your stories. Um, but you can just say thank you as well or download it and put it into some sort of collage or something. That is all. Let's move directly into questions here. Question number one, what are your thoughts on the follow unfollow method? Is it sustainable for growth? If one more fucking person follows me and unfollows me every week, I am going to pull my hair out. It is 100% not a way to grow. It is completely, it's like fucking pouring Rogaine on your legs and expecting them to get longer. Like it, it does not work. It might've worked 
five years ago worked. Um, you might have tricked people into hitting follow um, and then you went and unfollowed them, but like it, it is not a sustainable, real way to build a following. If you are thinking about doing a follow, unfollow thing, I just step back, delete Instagram for a week, take a fucking breath, realize this is not, you know, this is not the end all be all of life and you don't need to be doing these silly hacks to try and get this arbitrary number up because even if those people follow you, they're not going to engage, they're not going to care about you. And unengaged followers are the same as having no followers because eventually if they aren't engaging, the algorithm is going to kick them out, kick them out. The algorithm will be such that like those people are probably not going to see your content and so they might as well not be followers anyway. And while that number is going to be higher, it isn't going to provide any more value for brands. You are going to end up with high followers, low engagement, which is a much bigger detractor for us than low followers and high engagement. If I'm deciding between someone with 75,000 followers who gets 1,000 likes a photo and 25,000 followers who gets 1,000 likes a photo, I'm picking the 25,000 person every fucking time. Okay? So do not stress that much about that number. Yes, it is important. Also, I'm sure you've heard me talk about this before. It is going to become increasingly less important as the thing that matters is how many people are you actually reaching, not what is that number. Um, these hacks, these giveaways, these, these comment and, and engagement pods, these things are all born out of a desire for the wrong thing, which is short-term growth. And instead of thinking about the long term, what am I doing in three, five, ten years? How am I going to build an audience that actually cares about what I'm talking about? Focus on that. Good things will happen. Worry about follow, unfollow, and all these other things, and uh, you'll drive yourself crazy. Um, so please don't do it. It doesn't work, and it is just a, a huge waste of your time. Why do you think people are so sort of fixated on that? I think people are fixated on the number because there, there aren't many things in life that your, you know, how successful you are at that thing is the first thing that people interact with. You know, when you meet someone in a bar or you know, on a train or at a restaurant or whatever. You don't also have to tell them what your salary is and all of your accomplishments and what you look like naked and how big your house is and what kind of car you have. Like, you, you know, all of those things are not out in the open. And I think that the way Instagram is set up, at least that it is. And that number is a stand in for how interesting, successful, um, ambitious, you know, and talented you are. I don't think that the number actually represents any of those things, um, but it's a stand in for those things for most people. And it is a big signal to the general public where if you have followers, they go, Oh, you must be someone important. You know, people are following you. Um, just like, again, if you walked around and had your salary on your head and you, you know, you worked at a hedge fund, God forbid, uh, and it said, you know, you make $2 million a year, I think you'd probably find that people would treat you different. Why do you think people buy Ferraris? They want the first thing that people know about them is to be that I'm fucking richer than you. I make more money than you. I'm more successful than you. And I am trying to tip the power balance of this relationship immediately um, because pulling up in a Ferrari is a very clear indication that this person has more money than you. This is why, this is why the entire luxury industry exists in general. Conspicuous consumption is, you know, probably one of the bigger drivers of luxury purchases in the world. Uh, people want other people to know they're rich. Uh, and ideally richer than the people who are looking at them. Uh, so 
they buy expensive handbags, they buy expensive watches, they buy expensive shoes and expensive cars. And look, you can kid yourself and say, no, I like the craftsmanship of a Chanel bag. I don't buy it so people know it's a Chanel bag. It's a fucking lie. Everyone buys a Chanel quilted bag because everyone knows it's a Chanel quilted bag and everyone knows a Chanel bag costs $6,000 and somehow you had to afford it so it says something about you. So I totally get it and that is, uh, again, the reason people care much, so much about followers is the same reason that Chanel sells a shitload of those handbags every year is because it's an indicator of how successful you are. Um, but it is all fake. You know, it, it, none of it really matters. And for us forums increasingly, that follower count matters less and less. And we focus on how many people are you actually reaching? How much influence do you actually have? Who are those people? Do they care about what you say? What do you talk about? How often are you taking sponsored posts? What's your engagement? Is your engagement real or is it from other influencers? Do I think it came from a comment pod or do I think it came from actual consumers? Are the consumers asking you questions in the comments about the product or are they saying, oh my God, goals, you're such a babe, I love you. Um, all of these things matter more and more now than what that number is. So if you can let it go a little bit, I encourage it. Question number two, has social media turned us into a narcissistic society? I think at its core, Facebook, I will use Facebook as a, you know, as a proxy for this. It was created to help people connect and um, specifically it used photos to help people stay connected and to their friends, to their loved ones, obviously, as social media expanded, it expanded outside of that small group of friends that you had, and now it is obviously what you guys know it is today. Has it made us narcissistic? I don't think so. I think that like we are narcissistic, self-centered beings in general. It just has given people a platform, and it's made building a platform a lot easier. Um, to get famous, years ago, you had to be exceptionally lucky, exceptionally gifted, or have really good genes and just be incredibly good looking. <laughs> um, it has democratized with social media that like getting fame. And there's also now all of these little levels, right? Like you can have 5,000 followers and 5,000 followers is, you know, is not a small amount of strangers following you. But 20, 30 years ago, you couldn't really build an audience of 5,000 and be known in that community for just being you. So I think that it may feel like we're more narcissistic because media has become, has shifted to be about a person and that individual's point of view. But I, I think if anything, Instagram and all of these things is, is a reflection of what was already there, which is that we are self-involved, self-centered creatures who really only care about ourselves. Um, not that Instagram has turned us into self-centered, self-involved you know, involved creatures that only care about ourselves. So I think, you know, chicken or egg, I think the, you know, the narcissism became, came before Instagram, Instagram is just kind of shining a light on that. Um, you know, I go back, uh, you know, say it one more time of just like making sure a way to avoid that is just asking yourself before you post, is this something that is just going to make me feel better? Or is this something that like my audience is actually going to enjoy? Um, you don't have to make your feed all about you. You can do things for good. I see more and more influencers out there doing work for charity, using their feed to talk about social issues, to talk about politics, to talk about people that don't have a voice, lending that platform to those people. You can do that. You can buck the trends. You can you know, do more than just get yourself free clothes and get money. Um, Question number three, when do you know it's time to move from IG stories to YouTube? Mm. Ah. 
Um, one, you know, when is it time to switch from IG stories to YouTube? I would, I would argue that the, the question, while a good one, is flawed. I don't think that, you know, you just doing stuff on IG stories necessarily means, and, and people liking it, means that you will be good on YouTube. If what you do on IG stories is speak directly to camera and create the kind of content that, you know, makes sense on YouTube, then I think people enjoying your Instagram stories could be a good jumping off point for starting a YouTube. Um, the other thing is that I wouldn't wait for any indicator to start a YouTube. I wouldn't say, oh, I'm getting X percentage of drop off on my Insta stories. That must mean that people are engaged. That must mean I should start a YouTube. Starting a YouTube channel, I can tell you the little that I do, um, but I know Tim does quite a bit more. It, it is a lot more work than Instagram. Creating videos is a lot more work. Learning to edit them is more work. Starting something new is scary and puts you into this really uncomfortable position of starting with zero subscribers and no audience and having to ask people to watch this thing that you're not as good at, that you're new at, that you haven't totally figured out yet. So there are a lot of things that are difficult and scary and there are a lot of barriers to entry to starting a YouTube. I wouldn't think that your performance on Instagram stories is one of those barriers. Um, but I also wouldn't let any of that dissuade you. If you want to start a YouTube, if you have a story to tell that you don't feel like you can tell on Instagram, then I would start a YouTube. This show would not work on Instagram stories. I am too long-winded. You know, it, it is, you know, I've heard from you guys that you like, you know, sometimes people find the show and they'll like binge it. Like that stuff all works because it's YouTube. This would never work on Instagram. Now, you know, in some other ways it might work. I could, I could, you know, do things much shorter. The shows would be a minute long. I would answer one question really quickly, but like that wasn't the, sh the content that Tim and I wanted to put out. And so YouTube was the best place to tell this story. And we really haven't moved it over to Instagram or Instagram stories because YouTube is the best place to tell this story. And so think about the story you want to tell, ask yourself which platform is best to tell it on and tell that story. I promise you if it is compelling and if you're consistent and you will, you know, you will gain some sort of following on it. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much. Um, about when and, and worry more about why would you start a YouTube. That's all for today. Cheers.